Political persecution of Donald J. Trump has been going on for years with the now fully debunked Russia, Russia, Russia scam. Impeachment hoax one, impeachment hoax two, so much more. It just never ends. It's the political targeting at the highest level, as we call it political warfare. I want to go right to Rick now. He's our, our senior advisor for foreign policy and national security. But, Rick, I, to take off that ACLJ hat for a moment, you also uh, run the PAC associated with President Trump. This, to me, is the, li- the line has now been crossed. Whether it's the 87,000 more agents at the IRS, and Lindsey Graham just called him you know, uh, an, an army to come after the American people. Uh, we've seen the targeting at a at a grassroots level. Now we have the institutions being used against a former president of the United States. Look, the weaponization of government has been a problem for a while, and I think the Democrats have completely unleashed it. Look no further than the raid on, on Mar-a-Lago, but also the 87,000 IRS agents that are gonna come after everyday Americans. Uh, We've seen big tech and big corporations silence dissenting voices. And this is the trouble that uh, I see Uh, as I travel this country. um, Something has happened to the Republican Party because first and second generation Americans are becoming Republicans. They're becoming conservatives. And the reason why is because they are the canaries in the coal mine. They have seen fascism and totalitarianism before and they don't like it. Um, We have a problem with. Uh, generation of Americans, and I would say largely white, wealthy liberals who somehow have uh, allowed the systems to teach our children to hate America. This is a scary moment and people are rising up. Uh, Just anecdotally, I have to say, Jordan, uh, people in my life who were either nominally Republican or, you know, people who just didn't get involved in politics have all spoken to me to say, wow, I'm scared. We got to clean this up. I'm going to support Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, I think that in a sense, we know their goal. Their goal is to have Donald Trump arrested, tried, and convicted. I mean, that is the goal of the Democrats. We know that's been their goal through two impeachments and the special counsel investigation. I mean, they've been trying and trying, even with the January 6th committee. Now they've got the raid. Uh, but as you said, and I, I think Senator Graham kind of echoed the same message. I think that it's, it's interesting because that's what pe- everybody's hearing. And I, I'm getting those same messages, too, is that people that may have been on the line about getting involved again or wasn't too divisive are now 100% behind President Trump. And I think that, that this idea is going to be, uh, as a statement as Americans, we need to put him back into the White House. I think people see what's at stake right now. They see our country sliding away. They see homelessness. They see the rule of law being trashed. They see people being canceled. And it's un-American. And and people see it. And so what they want to see now is the fighter. They're realizing that if we don't fight against this, it's the slow slide towards socialism. And so they know Donald Trump is the fighter. And they've already tried. They've thrown everything at them. And I would say to conservatives and Republicans and independents, recognize the fact that Donald Trump has already been attacked. They've tried to impeach him. They've tried to ruin his family. There's not much left that they can do. And he is still standing he and is, fighting. He is still standing. He's still fighting. He's not backing down. I mean, this his statement, in fact, I think it encourages him in a sense. No one wants this to happen to them. No one wants an FBI raid on any of their properties. But I think it encourages him in a sense to say, you know what? I told people make America great again. This is when I think the video he released was excellent uh, about where we are as a country right now uh, and the messaging there about, you know, but we can overcome this. We can change this. It will take this is the thing, right? It will. And we've talked about this over again, but it takes personalities and, and styles of leadership like a Donald Trump to fix these agencies because uh, we know it. he he was the one. Hillary Clinton complained all she wanted about Comey. It was Donald Trump who got rid of him, paid the price for it, but I think would be going back into Washington, D.C., realizing what draining the swamp, uh, what it entails, how you have to be prepared for them to respond, and they're doing everything they can to keep him from doing that, uh, which would be the, the, the Trump's second term. I think it would be the drain the swamp show. It would be the major focus because this makes our country look weak. This makes us look ridiculous, Rick, to to our enemies and adversaries. For sure. And I think, you know, one of the reasons why President Trump travels the country to do all these rallies and we see massive big rallies is to empower people. 
is to have uh, people who are listening to the ACLJ radio show right now understand that if you are just listening and hoping somebody else does something, that you are uh, part of the problem, to be honest. You've got to get uh, equipped, you've got to get informed, and you've got to speak up. Some people might have to run for school board. Some people have to write bigger checks. Some people have to raise their voice on social media, but gone is the day that you get to just sit and listen and, and turn the radio off and say, gosh, I hope somebody's doing something about this. You have to do this. I, I ask everybody who's listening to our voice, what are you doing today to save your country? Because we must all fight back. And that's what Donald Trump taught us as the leader. He taught us fight back. And if I can just say, one little thing is yesterday I filed a defamation lawsuit against a woman named Olivia Troya, who literally took to social media and said that um, I, Rick Grinnell, tried to get Mike Pence to go to a white supremacist event. And it was so cutting. And I, I see a lot of ugliness and sure. attack, criticism and, and you know, false uh, criticisms attacked on me. But this one was just crossing the line because she was inside the Trump administration and has now become a, a never Trumper. But I filed in Virginia uh, court a defamation lawsuit against her. And I think I did this because Donald Trump taught me to fight back. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the kind of new way of operating, say, Rick, is, is people would say, oh, he's litigious. And we've been attorneys for the president uh, before and throughout the, the special counsel investigation, the first impeachment. But the fact is, when you become at, the, at this level and you, the, the attacks come at you the way they do, uh, you have to fight back at every every resource you have. So whether that's filing the lawsuit, whether it's the politics and getting out the vote, I mean, this has got to be the wake up call for Republicans. One is, you know, we've gone through going through the primary process as that finishes up. We have to come back together and unite too. I mean, that's a very important part. The Democrats would love to keep us divided and say, well, my candidate didn't win, so I'm not. I don't really want to get out there and vote. This should be the wake up call to say. We, we've got to take back Congress, and we've, we've got to, again, be prepared in 2024 for all-out war po politically. There's no question about it, and I, I sense it already that people see what's happening, and, and yesterday just as yet another example. It's not the first. Nope. We've seen it over the last year. People have been outraged, but I'm really encouraged. I'm somebody who looks at life and, and understands that the glass is always half full because we are Americans. And so I'm encouraged that so many people see this. We just now got to get into the phase where we fight back. Yeah, I mean, that's I agree, Rick, and I appreciate you joining us. This is the point, is that uh, more people need to join the cause. And there's a way to fight back, Rick, politically. You don't, you know, We don't have to go to war li literally because we have the, the ability to vote. And if we, ha if we come out and clear, if we come out in big numbers, we win. And, and you, they can't mess with it. It's a clear... We, we can we can get the numbers. We got to get united. And I think that again, this might be bizarrely in some ways. To me, it feels like maybe that uniting moment just occurred. Yeah, and and I would say to people who are listening is that uh, I believe in the ACLJ. I believe that this is a great organization that knows how to equip people and fight. So if you're wondering what you can do, realize that we have an amazing team that's that's on watch. And when we see something that crosses the line, we file a lawsuit and we take them to court. We don't just do a PR battle. No. We don't just try to rough them up on Twitter. What we try to do is stop them through the legal process, through the rule of law. So join ACLJ, go to ACLJ.org and, and help us because we are here on watch trying to find the fights. Rick, I appreciate it. As always, your insight. I mean, this is a former uh, acting director of National Intelligence, former ambassador to Germany. But he understands the politics, too, of this and the political warfare going on in our country.